Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we are going to be going over Fragment of the Enigma Mana Strike Spellblade. So, I actually was streaming the other day, and I was asking Twitch chat if they wanted to see any builds being made, and one that specifically stood out to me was Mana Strike Enigma Spellblade, and I was kind of confused, because when it, Fragment of the Enigma came out, that was essentially the first build Perry and I instantly thought of when we saw it, meaning that we thought that it was the meta way of playing Fragment of the Enigma. But after doing a little bit of a cursory look through a bunch of uploads and stuff like that for Last Epoch, I did not really find a good quality Mana Strike Fragment of the Enigma guide. I'm like, wait a second, this is supposed to be the build that all the other Fragment of the Enigma builds are based off of, so I guess I gotta make it. And that's what this is today. We are playing Fragment of the Enigma Mana Strike Spellblade. Now, if you haven't already, I'd heavily suggest leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel, as that is the best way of currently supporting me and the channel. You can also, of course, check me out on Twitch down below, give me a follow. You can always come around and ask me about questions or give me suggestions for builds. I always take suggestions for builds, and if you leave it down below in the description or in like the comments or anything like that, I'm probably sure going to read it, or at least attempt to read it as... Uh, 1.0 is going to be a very busy time for me. Now, of course, let's talk about the build. So if you don't know, this build is built around Spark Charges. Spark Charges is an alt ailment that can be applied by a few different sources, specifically Mana Strike is the biggest one. You can apply uh, Spark Charges with 100% chance with Mana Strike, which is innately very strong, as a lot of the other Spark Charge sources are much less and much less significant than, of course, Mana Strike. Uh, the only other few cases is going to be the new explosive trap and also as well uh, elemental nova actually has a hundred percent spark charge chance and that was actually the last spark charge build i played it was focused around elemental nova and that was supposed to be the quote-unquote side version of this build and of course this build didn't even exist at the time apparently at least from what i saw so that's uh, essentially what we're doing today is playing the mana strike version now i actually played a static spellblade recently as well and that build is very similar similar to this one, but instead of trying to proc static as many times as possible, we're just simply spamming out as many spark charges as possible through the uses, of course, Fragment of the Enigma and Mana Strike. Now, we can also get a lot of spark charge chance on our helmet like this, like 40% chance. We can get it on idols as well. We can get it on the passive tree. We can get it through a bunch of different sources, and we want to stack that number as high as possible. We want our Mana Strike to be applying as many spark charges as possible, because if you look on Fragment of the Enigma, we get a very large damage multiplier to our spark charges whenever we hit with a melee attack now of course are we actually going to be in melee range with this mana strike no of course not because mana strike has a node in it that allows it to shoot at range while also being auto targeting meaning that we can apply spark charges at range and uh, you could also auto target which allows you to of course uh just hold down the right click and watch the entire pack explode. This is one of those one button builds that people have been wanting for a long time now. The only other buttons that you want to be pressing is enchant weapon, which if they ever fix the node that makes it auto cycle, that will be great. Uh, then of course you also have flame ward, which is just your stereotypical defensive button. Just think of it like the equivalent to something like uh, immortal call and path of exile. You just press it when things get hairy. And of course you have an instant teleport because, you know, you always want a movement skill. But technically, you can go throughout the entire mono without having to press teleport or flame ward or anything. You can just hold right click the whole way and it'll be great. Uh, overall, I really like the play style of this build. Uh, you just walk up to things, you just right click them and stuff. It's very chill and it can definitely push into higher corruption and stuff because of the fact that it is utilizing double static touches static touch if you don't know is a ring that was buffed a while back it gives you a 10 percent chance to gain 75 ward on shock enemy hit and as you can tell on the screen we do a lot of hits every single individual spark charge counts as a hit every single frost clock counts as a hit every single mana strike counts as a hit and we're also proccing lightning blast from frost claw which is being proc from mana strike meaning that we get even more hits. Now, one thing that's really cool about this build uh, is with the introduction to Dragoret's Claw, which I got a really good one, by the way, spoilers, uh, this, this patch, uh, it means that we can use the node inside uh, 
freaking lightning blast called closed circuit that gives us a decent amount of increased damage whenever it chains back to us and also gives us a large amount of crit chance one of the biggest problems with uh the fragment of the enigma is it's actually an offhand and that is a problem because base crit for spells is usually gotten from using like a crystal skull or something like that the problem is you know fragment enigma has no base crit on it that's the biggest problem with this item by far is solving your base grid. Thankfully, Dragon Rest Claw is on a rune dagger base, and you can also run a large amount of crit chance with that one threshold node at the bottom of Mage. It gives you 3% base crit per point, right? You have that, which is phenomenal, by the way, makes up for a lot of the crit chance that we normally wouldn't have. Thank you for the rework, by the way, for the short, like the lower end of the sork uh passive tree rework that saved us there and we also of course get all the crit chance from our lightning blast closed circuit triggers and all of that combined leads to a very fun build and with all that being said we're going to go in game and talk about it in more detail shall we so here we are in game with the character just to go off real quick mana strike here one point travel into mana spark four points into spark charges we want as much spark charge chance as possible this is what makes this build viable and that on top of the more damage with spark charges applied by melee attacks, of course. And of course, four points to Swift Sap. We want as much attack speed as possible because the faster we attack, the more spark charges we apply. Two points travel to Rage Sap. Three points into Rune Sap. This is very strong. It gives you a very large amount of percent spell damage. My percent spell damage goes up through the roof whenever I am spamming this node, as long as we have a bunch of attack speed. One point into teleporting strikes to make it so that mana strike is ranged so we can attack across the screen here. Then we grab one point in the star guide so that it auto targets our cursor so that it will auto target enemies and apply spark charges for us automatically, which is great. Then we have five points into sprite blade to give as much AOE as possible so that we can apply as much spark charges as possible in the area that we're applying our mana strike in. This helps us completely nuke packs very easily, right? And that's pretty much it for Mana Strike. It's very stereotypical. If you were to get plus levels to Mana Strike, the main thing that we care about would be something like getting a bunch of Ward on hit with like these nodes. Like that would be like your next uh, prerogative is like just getting Ward on hit or whatever, something like that, right? And that's pretty much it for Mana Strike. Now for Enchant Weapon, Stereotypical Tree, all we care about is Celerity, Concentration, and then eventually Kindling Blade when they fix it, if you want to make it automatically recast. Make sure that you have a decent amount of cooldown. You have a nine second duration on Enchant Weapon, and we have almost 100% uptime on it with this current cooldown that I'm at. If you get better cooldown, you can have an exact 100% uptime. Uh, everything else on the tree doesn't really matter. It's really just up to personal preference. Uh, so then the next tree we're gonna talk about is Frostclaw. Frostclaw, all we care about is getting Volley of Glass. We shoot out five projectiles every time. Uh, we want Makawaddle so that we have a chance to cast it on melee hit. So 30% chance. And then that will give us a bunch of extra hits because we use like Spark Artillery and stuff. The main reason that we're using something like this is to generate as much ward as possible. So if we look at our rings here, we have a chance to gain 75 ward when we hit a shocked enemy. And every single time that we trigger this, this is five extra hits on the enemy, which means it's five extra chances to gain that 75 ward. And then we also grab the node here, Rayowen's Veil, which gives us ward based on its freeze rate multiplier. And we actually give it some freeze rate multiplier with our critical strike chance as well, right? This actually gives us a very large amount of uh, freeze rate multi, which is then turned into uh, uh, ward whenever we cast it then we also grab three points in glam drink to get a bunch of uh, a decent amount of flat for our frost claw because like uh essentially the way that this build works for single target you just want to spam as much things as possible it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's spell lightning damage it'll do a decent amount of damage same thing with like spark artillery we want to make it so that we're applying um uh, like lightning damage instead because that's what we're focusing on with this build then we have lightning blast we're triggering lightning blast on crit with drag or claw we get up to three casts per second and the main reason that we're utilizing this is specifically for access to closed circuit so if we look at my tree here i'm at 65 spell critical strike chance but whenever we trigger lightning blast and it will like chain back to us right with a chain lightning here it'll chain back to us and give us a very large amount of increased crit it'll bring us all the way from 65 percent that you see right here all the way to 100 percent crit if we're hitting the enemy which is absolutely insane even at three times per second 
right? Now, these notes here do not give you give your lightning blast actual chains because uh, it doesn't include triggered uh, lightning blasts, right? Now, you do need to use chain lightning to get those extra chains. Then we also have something like lightning attunement, which gives us a lot of DR. And then we grab the spark charge stuff here and spark charge damage here. This isn't too much of our single target damage. This just gives us more clear because we're going to be chaining multiple times with lightning blasts and those can all apply spark charge on hit. It'll have like a 40% chance thanks to our fragment of the enigma. And that just gives us more clear essentially. So like you'll watch like lightning blasts hit multiple enemies and apply spark charges and they'll all explode, giving us a decent portion of clear. And of course, it also gives us a bunch more hits when we're clearing for invoker static touch, like I said before. And that's pretty much it for lightning blasts. Also, it gives us a decent amount of single target now, uh, then of course, flame ward, stereotypical flame ward setup, nothing too different here. And that's pretty much it for pass uh, skills. Now let's talk about important passives. So the main passives we want, we want to be stacking ward retention. We want to be stacking attack speed specifically. We want to be stacking intelligence. Uh, here, we're grabbing this so we get a bunch of critical strike chance. It's like most of our critical strike chance as we're stacking intelligence for a fragment of the enigma. This just gives us a large amount of spell critical strike chance, making up for the fact that we don't have that much crit on our gear. Then for Rune Master here, just grabbing as much intelligence. Eventually, you grab the rest of the points in Mental Catalyst when you have the rest of the plus levels. Getting the less damage taken is great, and then getting some extra crit and damage against crit uh, low-life enemies is great as well. And then we have Spellblade here, just getting some res. Ward on hit, uh, getting the less damage taken with the shields and getting some armor stacking, right? Because we are in desperate need of armor with this build. So we want as much armor as possible. Five points into Stormblade because getting that spark charge chance is really, really good. Five points into Essence Duel for that attack speed. The dual wield, oh, uh, this is an artifact. Get rid of this. <laughs> that was for my last uh, Spellblade build. Then uh, 10 points in the Mental Fortitude, then 5 points to Prodigy. These nodes are very important as they give us a decent amount of ward, uh, like sitting ward. So for builds like this that specifically get all of their ward from stuff like Invoker Static Touches, it is very good and very uh, needed to have a decent amount of passive ward gen, just so that whenever we're just sitting here and starting a monolith, we don't have to like es essentially like be at low ward all the time. So these nodes in Spellblade absolutely carry our uh, our uh, like our chunk early on. You can also grab five points into Burden of Knowledge if you need more damage some reason and that's pretty much it for uh the passives that are important now let's talk about the items so for idols eventually you want to be filling out with spark charge on melee hit idols i only have two of them you can go even further with this go even crazier but mainly you just want spark charge and melee hit idols you could go for also as well increased area with uh area uh, elemental skills to give your mana strike even bigger area which would cause your clear to be much better but my clear is pretty good as it is now for required unique items the only technical required unique item would be a fragment of the enigma you don't need like a rolled one by the way i just got a really nice purdy one and then like you can run like a rune dagger for base crit that's essentially like the two items that are required for this build i would say i would essentially have invoker static touches as well as they give you a lot of ward but other than that the rest of the items in the build are completely easily able to like be changed the only thing is like getting attack speed on your rune dagger is very important and getting attack speed on your gloves are very important as well so as long as you have a, an attack speed rune dagger doesn't have to be a dragger ass attack speed uh swaddling doesn't have to be a uh uh, swaddling the erase just attack speed on a pair of gloves would be great too uh so yeah like that's what you want specifically now if you don't have a drag or ass with attack speed you can just dump lightning blast in favor of a different skill probably something like teleport get the armor on teleport right get the stun immunity there's a lot of different things that you can do and i'll let you uh figure out what you want to do specifically but I started this build with a Dragger S and that's what we're starting with. But I definitely think that I wouldn't play this build. Uh, I wouldn't start this build without as much like this much attack speed. This is like what I would say a good amount of attack speed. Now, if you have a normal rune dagger, what you could do, uh, or if you had a Dragger S on to make up for some of the attack speed that you'd be missing if you used a normal Dragger S is you could run like um, a Jade Amulet with attack speed on it, right? That would help a lot. Uh, that would definitely help a lot and that would like make it so that you know the build is playable without all this now of course that's pretty much it for um uh, uh, required unique items let's go over the gear in more detail 
So here, all we care about is T7, Spark Charger, and Melee Hit, and Intelligence. The suffixes don't matter. Of course, it'd be great if you got better suffixes. I did actually seal a T1 Lightning Crit Multi, which would be great. Then for the Amulet here, Spell Critical Strike Chance, eventually Crit Multi there. Then I got some uh, Shred. This is the main place to get Shred Armor and Hit. You need this affix to uh, give you a lot of extra damage. So Shred is important. You definitely want Shred on your Amulet. Then, of course, like I said, Dragorass with Attack Speed and eventually, like, you'd want, like, Crit Multi or something like that, right? Then for the chest here, Lightning, Crit Multi, Intelligence, and then on the suffixes, it can be anything. Probably armor-related suffixes. We are starving on armor, so instead of that Sun Avoidance and the, the Ward per second, I would go for armor. I just had this laying around, so I just threw it on because it's like 80% Crit Multi for free. Then, of course, for our Fragment of the Enigma, uh, I have Spell and Spell Crit. Crit multi works too. It doesn't really matter what's on this. Uh, this is just a really good fragment of the Enigma that I had because I've been playing for so fucking long, right? This patch. Uh, then double invoker static touches. I wouldn't use one unless if it had like 8% chance. Other than that, like I wouldn't like use it. So like you want like 8 percenters at least on these things. Then for the belt here, just a exalted critical strike avoidance roll to make up for the critical strike avoidance we have. Then cooldown recovery speed for our enchant weapon. And eventually for the prefixes, you can go for like mana regen and stuff like that. If you could manage to cap your crit avoid like through your boots or something instead of that poison res, you can use something called an Isadora's Tomb Binding, which is a belt that gives you a very large amount of armor. I would prefer that you use that instead of this. I'm only simply using this to cap my critical strike avoid, but if you got critical strike strike avoidance on this or on your gloves then you can dump this belt and run the isadoras because that will give you way more chunk than this belt ever could right and then of course on the boots here increased movement speed exalted movement speed is most important intelligence and then eventually crit avoid and uh, cooldown recovery speed then for the relic here spell critical strike chance exalted intelligence and then whatever suffixes you can manage to get on it i did not get any suffixes as you can tell with my resistances and then i have a swaddling of the erase the main reason why this is so strong is because not only does it give us attributes for intelligence it gives us more spell damage to low health enemies this is on top of the more spell damage to low health enemies with uh, the node inside rune master so we whenever enemies get to low life they die very quickly right which is great for the spark charge explosions but also as well this glove has increased attack and cast speed 11 uh, up to 12 percent i believe and then you can also get like t6 t7 melee attack speed on it as well and then i managed to get t7 void res which helped me cap my void res now of course uh you don't have to actually use a swaddling you can use anything any pair of gloves with a decent amount of attack speed but swaddling would be best in slot of eventually with weaver's well affixes and you can just cook a bunch of them and try to get for attack speed that's what you mainly care about now of course you get other stats like intelligence and stuff like that that'd be great but you mainly want the attack speed that's the most important thing about these pair of gloves and that's pretty much it for the build and that's pretty much it for the um like at fixes the items for blessings like crit or crit multi works here either way uh here lightning shred very important gets us lots of extra damage uh critical strike avoidance then armor flat and then armor percentage you definitely want to upgrade these to get as much armor as possible that's the main thing that will keep you from being chonky in the end game is armor because uh, as when you have this much ward gen, the only thing that helps you out at this point is getting a little bit more ward retention and getting like some armor. Uh, technically, eventually, you could go for something like a uh, Frostbite Shackles with attack speed on them, with like T7 attack speed, get some like uh, lightning, uh, get some cold res in a bunch of places, and that would help out a lot in terms of ward retention, but that would be like very high investment kind of shenanigans. Now, with all that being said, this has been Tread. Off to go do something else. Bye.